right, welcome back. This is yaymath.org's presentation of Yaymath in studio. I'm Robert Adut, founder of yaymath.org, and today we're going to be talking about scientific notation, which is a very cool crossover topic from both math and science. It's used a lot in chemistry, and uh, it's a really valuable tool to help us express really large numbers and really small numbers, okay? And we're going to use rules of exponents to help us do that. All right, so let's do this. Let's jump in. Yay math! Scientific notation has a couple very uh, important rules, okay? The first rule is for consistency, you have to have one digit, then the decimal place, okay? One digit and then the decimal place. This thing can't be zero point blah, 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 because that's like sort of not a real number. Because if you could have zero here, you could have zero, 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 zero. We don't want that. Um, or even zero here, zero here. So in order to prevent this from happening, this number, the single digit right here, this right here, this right here, it's like I'm quoting some movie. Um, this has to be somewhere between one to nine this number right there, all right? And then you could have your digits after, okay? So you could have, let's say, a couple digits, maybe two, three, four, or one, whatever. And then you have times 10 to a certain power, okay? That could be a positive or a negative number, all right? So let's, as a reminder real quick, let's go over here. So we have like 10 to the three, right? Would be 10 times 10 times 10 which would be one with three zeros, 1,000, okay? So the idea is that it's a one, one times 10 to the three. So it's the digit one right here, and then make the number bigger by three decimal placements, three multiplications of 10. Every time we multiply by 10, we make the number bigger or larger by a factor of 10, so we move it across. This number, 1,000, is called, hello, eraser, standard form, let's put it here, standard, and this is called scientific notation. Scientific notation. All right, so let's give it a little whirlsy. What if I said, 5,000, <coughs> not even 5,000, there you go, 567,000, all right? So pay attention to this, you guys, because this is, you know, your future salary. You kind of want to get this right, you know, because if you miss a decimal place, that could be like literally thousands of dollars lost or gained, hopefully. So let's say I want to turn this number from standard form into scientific notation. The single digit before the decimal is five. So here we go, 5.67 times 10 to the, here we go. Clearly, 5.67 is way small compared to 567,000. So I need to make this number really big. If I need to make this number really big, I can assume that this will be a positive exponent, all right? It's just making, I'm exploding 5.67. All right, so we have to ask ourselves how many movements that is. A lot of students like the little swoopy thing. We could do that for tradition, keep tradition alive, you know? Tradition, tradition. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five movements from this decimal place of 5.67. Five movements to the right would get us to 567,000. Bring that comma in there. All right, so that's the standard form. Let's go over here and do a decimal, like point, 0 0.12123. Uh, there you go. So this number is pretty small comparatively. So if I wanted to do the single decimal place, that would be, yeah, we could do it like right here, you know, just to maybe make the point, 1.23, there it is, times 10 to the. Look closely. I have no right mathematically, to turn this really small decimal into the number 1.23. These are different until I make 1.23 smaller by moving this decimal place 
to the left. And if I move it to the left, essentially making it smaller, I'm multiplying by 10 to a negative exponent. Essentially, that's like dividing by 10. I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. 1.23. Flip. How many movements to get here? A 1, a 2, a 3. 3 to the left, making it smaller. It's 10 to the negative 3. There's the scientific notation version of this standard form version. And so here, let's, uh, let's do a brief breakdown of negative exponents real quick. Uh, negative exponent is the same. This is 1.23 times 1 over 10 to the positive 3. So a rule for exponents is anytime we have a negative exponent, that whole term will move to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. So if you look closely, that was 10 to the 3. That was your 1,000 right there. Okay. So when you multiply by 1 over 1,000, you're essentially dividing by 1,000. Dividing 1 times 1,000, making it smaller. Okay. So good news is, even though this is all true, we could just think of it like moving to the left and moving to the right. Moving to the right makes numbers bigger, multiplying by 10, by 10, by 10, by 10, by 10. Moving numbers or decimals to the left is dividing by 10, essentially negative exponents to the power of 10. It's just moving it that way, okay? So that's all fine and dandy. Now, we're going to multiply and divide. Set it up. Set it up. All right. Let's use some rules that we have discussed with regards to multiplication. This is all one long multiplication problem. It's the same as 3 times 10 to the 5th, essentially times 4 times 10 squared. You'll notice there's no need for these parentheses ultimately because it's a single number. This is like, what, 30,000 or 300,000? This is 300,000 essentially. This is 400, 4 times 100. But we don't have to know that. It's okay. It's just you don't have to know what the number is. You're welcome to turn them into a standard form, but you don't have to. Okay? We just have to know how to operate within multiplication. So here we are we're multiplying the, all these numbers. And by the commutative property in which we can change the order of multiplying, I am permitted to go 4, 3 times 4 times 10 to the fifth, times 10 squared. And that looks more palatable, if you will. 3 times 4 is 12 times 10 to the fifth times 10 squared. Maybe if you have some experience with this, you'll know that this becomes 10 to the seventh. And a lot of teachers and a lot of books say, oh, it's like you add. You add 5 plus 2. And whenever people say you add, I just go like that, air quotes because this is not an addition problem. This is a multiplication problem. So while I recognize that 5 plus 2 is 7, and I recognize and acknowledge that the exponent will be 7, I would be cautious about memorizing rules like, yeah, you add, without understanding the context. Because if you don't understand the context, if we don't, then we might get confused. They're like, wait, is this the time you add? When do you add? Under these conditions, it's empty. So what I can suggest is at least getting a feel for what 10 to the 5th is, if this is ever confusing. Let's go over here. Let's do it. Let's go over here. 10 to the 5th times 10 squared. 10 to the 5th means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Five times. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 <coughs> times 10. There. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then these is 10 times 10. Now hopefully it's clear how many 10s are being multiplied. 5, 6, 7. Right? So that's why it's 10 to the 7th. Are we done with this problem? Is it in scientific notation? Some people make the mistake of saying yes. It's not done. Because, if you recall, scientific notation needs one digit and then the decimal. Right now, this 12 has a decimal right here. This is two digits before the decimal. 
So this would be incomplete, technically not scientific notation. So we need to turn 12 into 1.2, observe. Now this is going to be weird for some people, but once you get it, you'll always get it, okay? I recommend this method, check it. Check it out. Yeah, so it used to be there, there it is. 12 times 10 to the seventh. Now I just made 12 into 1.2. Okay, so just ask yourself, if you had $12, right, and you said to me, hey, Robert, I have $12, and I was like, yeah, you mean 1.2, right? Like, you would be like, no, no, they're not the same. And I'll be like, why not? They're the same. They eventually will be the same. They're totally the same. And you say, no, they're not the same. And I say, why not? And you say, well, 12 is way bigger than 1. This is like $1.20, this is 12. So you just made my 12 way smaller. I'm like, you're right, I did do that. So essentially, let's see if I can find red in the house to imply smaller. Smaller. So I just made 12 smaller by one decimal place. 12 here became there. So, in order to make you happy, because I just made your 12 smaller, what do you think I would need to do to the seven? Like how many more tens would I need to counterbalance it? Like if I make 12 smaller into 1.2, to make it balanced again, I would have to increase this. I would have to make this bigger by a factor of 10. So this goes to eight. See that? So then make that bigger. And now we're balanced again, bigger. So we're cool, this is in scientific notation. 12 becomes smaller to 1.2 by one decimal place. You're like, oh no, how do you do that? Oh, oh, okay, 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 I got it back, I got it back. So I'm like, now are they the same? And you're like, yes. Smaller, bigger, balanced back, okay? So let's give that uh, a whirl with um, divide. Um, I'm gonna do one more multiply and then a divide. I think it would be good. Let's do like, um, oh, this will be cool. How about this? How about this? Uh, 0.5 uh, times 10 to the negative six. 0.3 times 10 to the negative one. Oh, look out. No problem though, check it just like we did over there. 0.5 times 0.3 is basically five times three. And we count total decimal places used, one decimal place, one decimal place, total of two. So that would be instead of 15, two decimal places back. That's 0.15, all right? Times 10 to the Add, right? If you want to remember that, that's okay. Just know the context of why that is. Just like five plus two is seven, so two negative six plus negative one is coincidentally negative seven. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay. This is not scientific notation because we need one digit and then the decimal. Maybe you could see that the decimal needs to go right there so that it's 1.5. Coming! All right, times 10 to the. We just made this bigger. 0.15 and 1.5 are different. So we just made this bigger. Coming in in green. <coughs> Here we go. In order for us to keep this copacetic, to keep it balanced, to keep it legitimate, we have to reduce the negative seven. Make it bigger here, you're like, ah, changed it, I made it bigger. I need to make this smaller by one decimal place, smaller. Common mistake, all right, think it through. If I made negative seven smaller by one, that's minus one, that would be minus eight. And so, 
smaller. There you go. That's good practice. Please, you can do this. You can totally get this right. You can impress your teacher, impress your professor. They're like, check this out. It's counterbalance. Okay, look out below. Well, we have a couple things going on here, right? We, I definitely <laughs> went for glory with this problem. This is a challenging one if it's our first division, but we could do it. How many times does 0.1 go into 12? The calculator could tell you that it's 120. Um, you could think it through. It's like 1 goes into 12 12 times, but now a smaller number would go into 12 more. So this result would be 120, okay, times 10 to the. So we have negative exponent rules. If you recall, the negative exponent a negative 3 would go down here and become 3, and the negative 8 would go up here and become positive 8. I'll prove that over here. Let's give you a brief context. So that's 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 8. Negative exponent rules. Does the negative 3 stay or move? Should I stay or should I move? Down. Should I stay or should I move now? It comes up and it comes to positive eight. And some people say that the way to do this is subtract, like eight minus three. They're not wrong that eight minus three is five, which is the exponent, but I would just suggest knowing what you're doing, right? Because if you have eight of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all over three of these, one, two, Three, this is sort of like a football game. This is the line of scrimmage. And then you have like this guy blocking this guy, boom, boom. This guy blocking this guy, boom, boom. This guy blocking this guy. It's like these five tens are left unblocked. They're the ones that are sort of left open. And uh, that's why 10 to the fifth is upstairs, which we acknowledge is eight minus three. I get it. I know why we're saying that, but we have to have context, okay? In fact, we could have done that subtract thing right over here. If you look closely, that's negative 3 minus negative 8, which is negative 3 plus 8, which is indeed 5. Ooh, we get to practice our thing more, our little movement dance. Let's do it. 120 is not in scientific notation, but 1.2 is. We don't need to say 1.20, same number times 10 to the, here we go. Used to be here, used to be here, 120. How many movements from 120 to 1.2? Look, labe, lube, there it is. Two movements, two factors of 10 smaller. I just made this number smaller, not allowed. Until I make this one bigger, then I'm allowed and proud. Do it. Make this bigger by a factor of two for the two movements. Smaller down to 1.2, bigger up to seven, and this problem's done. All right. Yeah, that's it. That's all we really needed to do. That's scientific no notation, scientific nutshell notation in a nutshell. Thanks for watching this. This was awesome to do with you. Loving it. Loving, loving, loving life. Let's do it. Yay math. Yaymath.org. Check it out. Uh, invite me to your school and I'll do this with you guys. That'll be so fun. Check it out. Come to the website. Bye.